In the show today, we are having an apple tasting party, and we're going to learn how to evaluate apples like the experts do. There are literally hundreds of different cultivars that you can grow in your own backyard if you order them from a specialist fruit tree nursery. But for today's show, we have decided to taste three different apple varieties that most people can easily buy from their local shops, and they are Gala, Granny Smith, and Honeycrisp apples. So go to your fridge if you have those apples. We're going to taste them in just a minute. My guests on the show today are Yael Hickok, a volunteer who cares for Boyer's Orchard in Anchorage, Alaska, that has over 120 different varieties of apple trees. And my other guest is Dr. Amy Bowen, Director of Consumer Insights Group at Vineland Research and Innovation Center in Ontario. Okay, Amy, it's time for us to do some fruit tasting big time. So lead us through, how do we start? How can we start our apple tasting now? In terms of picking sort of the three apples, um, you know, as you uh, uh, mentioned, Susan, that we pick them so that they'd be widely available everywhere. Um, in terms of gala, you know, that apple's been around since about the 1930s. Um, it was bred in New Zealand. Um, and it's known for just having a very sort of, you know, pleasant, sweet profile, sort of a, it pleases everybody type of apple. And it actually in 2019 took over as the biggest producing variety in the, um, in the US. And it's also a top producer in um, Canada and in Ontario. We've got our slice of gala apple. What's next? So then what we're going to do is we're going to go through and evaluate it based on its sort of aroma and flavor. I just picked kind of um, four kind of key characteristics. So that overall apple intensity. So thinking about it, how apple-y is it when you think of, you know, that sort of overall. And would you rate that kind of low, medium or high compared to other apples that you are used to eating? We also put honey in there, floral, because those are two things that people usually really like the taste of or the flavors of um, in apples. And then green herbaceous, which is another note that you'll sometimes find um, um, in apples. Um, but not always, you don't have to have all of these in, in any of, in all of them. So what you do is you can smell it and then um, we'll take a bite of it and then we'll see if we perceive any of those flavors um, when we're sort of chewing on it in mouth and then also pay attention to the taste of it. If you smell this gala apple, yeah, what are you getting out of it? Because I know what I got out of it right away. I don't know if I'm right. I get a little bit of the herbaceous uh, smell. That's not I something, get, yeah. I get a herbaceous smell too. To me, yeah. when I smell this apple, I've never done this before. I smell yeah. grass. I smell yeah. fresh cut grass. I have <laughs> never smelled an apple like that before. Yeah, yeah. The, it's just that that new spring grassy kind of smell is what's yeah. coming uh, forward. And and uh, yeah, I've never noticed that before either. So I'm really glad we're doing this. I get to so, notice new tones that I've never paid attention to before. So Amy, is it a good idea? Should we now take a bite? And yeah. do we look at those four categories or think about them again after eating it? Yeah, so then take a bite and then you'll kind of think about those overall intensities and then also the, the sweetness and the, uh, the acidity. And also when you bite into it, that's when the texture really comes through, right? So you, it's not even just what you, you feel in mouth, but also the sound that can also be part of the, you know, that sort of influence, especially around crisp. Okay, so I took a bite, um, but I'm gonna put it out, out to you, Yael, first. What, in terms of those four original categories, apple intensity, honey, floral, and green herbaceous, what do you get when you taste this apple, this gala apple? Um, I would say I taste some honey, but not a, not a ton of it. So maybe a medium on the honey. I don't notice the floral or the herbaceous tones when I'm eating it. Um, and as far as the um, texture, it's not the crispiest, but it's not too soft. So it's kind of medium. So let's go on to the second apple. I'll just say about Gala, but I think exactly having kind of the middle intensity is why it's a crowd pleaser, right? There's nothing there that's going to offend or take away. And so it just is, you know, it sits sort of happy in the middle where somebody finds something they like about it. And I think that's why it's such a popular apple. It's, it's, so it's a good standard, a good kind of reference to have when you're doing a tasting to kind of, you know, look at what a, what a kind of classic, um, you know, apple profile is. We're doing our Granny Smith apple, right? Yes. Yeah. So we're doing the Granny Smith apple. So Granny Smith apple is another kind of standard apple. Most people think of a green apple, The Granny Smith is sort of what comes to mind. So this apple was actually developed in um, 1868 and it comes from Australia originally. 
Um, and, um, you know, it's known for having sort of, actually, I'm not gonna tell you what it's known for. Let's do the tasting sheet first. I don't wanna bias you. So we'll, we'll go through and we'll evaluate it. And then we can see if we come up with the, the profile that uh, they would sort of classify this as. So we've got our sort of wedge here then of the Granny Smith, and we'll just take a smell of that. Mm. Okay, Yael, what do you say? I'm smelling the herbaceous, almost woody smell to it. I'm, uh, that's what I'm getting from that. You know what I'm getting? Uh, that was my first thing as well. Green herbaceous, the fresh cut grass, but it's a little off, like it's a little different. But I do smell a little bit of honey in there. Just a bit, more than the last one. Okay. I know we're not supposed to compare back. Um, <laughs> I'm not getting floral. I'm not not getting any apple intensity smell at all. No. So shall we crunch? Yeah, let's crunch. <laughs> mm. Wow. This is interesting because when I think of Granny Smith, I think, oh, it's going to be so tart. It's actually quite sweet. No, it is. I agree. So, um, Yael, what do you want to, do you want to go through your, your ratings? Sure. Um, I'd say it's, between a medium and high intensity. Um, the honey level I would say is about medium. I don't taste a lot of floral or green herbaceous. And uh, yeah, I'd say like sweetness is about middle and acidity somewhere between medium and high for me. The cr uh, texture is more crisp and it's more juicy. So like medium to high on those two, I would say. The biggest difference that I perceive here is the acidity. And you have to think of it not at instant acid sort of builds. If you start getting that kind of salivation, you're sort of feeling at the back of your throat. That's that high acid perception. That's the physiological response that you, you have in your mouth when you perceive something with acid. So if you just sort of wait with me, this apple made me salivate a lot more. And so I would rate that, that you know, as that higher acid perception to it. And the same thing with the flavor, I do get some of that green herbaceous, but not right away. I have to let it kind of linger in my mouth that some of the, you know, the, the sweetness has to sort of go away. And then that sort of finish, the aftertaste of it is that, that green kind of grassy note. And then that sort of high acidity coming through, which really kind of distinguishes this apple um, for me. So let's then move on to our third apple today. Okay. So our third apple today is Honeycrisp. So I chose it because it's sort of, well, kind of an apple that took the world by storm, right? When it came out onto the market. But what most people don't realize is this actual apple was actually bred in 1960 and it took 31 years to come to market. <laughs> and it wasn't, wow. so 1991 was when it was available for growers and 1997 is when it first got to grocery store. So it just shows the long road it takes to get an apple um, and all sort of the work that goes into it. So this apple here, it comes out of the University of Minnesota um, breeding program in the US and really kind of shook up the apple world in terms of consumers loving it and it having this sort of very kind of uh, profile that they just sort of latched onto and, and having sort of this great name. So we can, if we've got time, we can talk a little bit more about it, but I guess let's taste it because that's what the most important part of it is right now. Yeah, now this one has a strong aroma. I smelled it as soon as I cut into it. It just kind of filled the area with this, I don't know how to describe it. To me, it's like almost like a wine smell. I don't know. What do you think? So uh, the, the one that I have, I smell it, but I'm working hard. So it just goes to show oh. how different mm -hmm. apples from different places, maybe this is an older one, who knows. And if I'm gonna put it in our four categories, apple intensity, no. Honey, maybe it smells like honey. Floral, nah, I don't think so. And green herbaceous, I don't think so. So honey is my best bet for this smell. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a crunch. So to me, I found it very high in the overall apple intensity. And this is the only one I got floral on the nose. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Okay, let's okay. try it. Shall we crunch? Mm. Wow. I got to tell you, the first time I ever tried Honeycrisp apples, I was over the moon. I couldn't believe how amazing they were. Mm -hmm. Found them at a farmer's market. They were brand new in farmer's markets at the time. So... Yael, do you want to go through your tasting handout here? Sure. Yes. Um, definitely, I would rate it high on the apple intensity and the honey flavor. 
And I do taste the floral. I didn't smell it so much, but I taste something floral in there and um, nothing of the green or herbaceous that I'm noticing. Um, sweetness, I would say, is between medium and high. And there's some acidity. I would say that's, for me, between low and medium. Texture hmm. is fairly crisp and very juicy. What really stands out to me on, on this one is the aromatics, like the, the, the flavor, it's just the intensity is that much higher than the other two apples. Like just even when I would sort of rate them, they would both be in that sort of, you know, medium plus medium high kind of kind of category. And then the texture, even cutting into it, my fingers were so wet and sort of sticky compared to cutting, you know, the other two apples. So that juiciness that you get in mouth um, and that kind of the crispness that's there. And, and that's really what, you know, stands out about Honeycrisp, why it's such a, um, you know, a favorite is that it actually has, um, uh, it's actually sort of shown at the cellular level that it's got a different structure than other apples, which allows it to have that sort of real crisp and juicy release. This has been amazing because I will never taste an apple in the same way. And um, I also put online a link I found to an apple. What is it called? It's the apple flavor wheel an apple flavor wheel. And I like how they divide it up into the different kinds of flavors you may find in different apples. So if people want to go to orchardpeople.com slash apple dash tasting dash party, you can download that as well. This has been an amazing apple tasting party. I am so happy that you both joined me for this party in a time in our world where we got to find reasons to have fun, right? <laughs> Absolutely. This is great. <laughs> this is great. And so I so appreciate Amy, you teaching us and empowering us in this way so that we can look at the apples and taste them in a different way. Oh, you're welcome. It's always fun to do.